A couple of new adapted monsters from the original Scary Stories book trilogy have been revealed in the new trailer. So if you want to hear about those, then stick around to the end of this video. But first, I've been waiting all winter to hang this baby back up. So the new Scary Stories trailer contains a mix of new footage and stuff that we've seen before in the Super Bowl trailers. If you're sitting there wondering, why haven't I seen that footage, what are you talking about? It could be because you're not subscribed with death bell notifications on. So the trailer starts as many movie trailers do, establishing the setting, 1960s Mill Valley, Pennsylvania. Our characters discover a spooky house and go inside where we see our first thing you missed. Yeah, we got a counter now because I ran a poll and you guys said, yeah. You might as well put a counter. The room is lit by candle lights, and this whole situation is probably a reference to The Curse, a story from more scary stories to tell in the dark, in which some college kids are doing a frat initiation where they must explore this deserted house with a candle. The other students watch from outside, where they see that each pledge who attempts the dare disappears after their candle goes out on the third floor. Eventually, they all go up to investigate, thinking it was some kind of prank, but they find nothing, with no sign of the disappeared students. Every year since then, a frat member has died or gone crazy, and the writer of the story is the only one left remaining. My guess is that this college initiation was changed to a high school dare to better fit the characters of this movie. The kids in the movie find this book, and it seems that the scary stories from the book start to come true and haunt their town. I'm guessing that this is one of the illustrations found in that book. Not quite as creepy as some of the illustrations from the actual book trilogy that this movie is based on, but still kind of creepy to find an old picture containing a headless sailor just standing there. It looks like they're going to be combining tales from different stories. Headlessness is one of the most common themes found in the books, as somebody loses their head and literally six different short stories. May I Carry Your Basket, Aaron Kelly's Bones, Oh Susanna, The Brown Suit, It's Him, and the iconic Me Tai Do Ti Walker. But the sailor outfit can only point to one story, called Somebody Fell From A Loft, about a mysterious body that falls onto a ship on an overseas voyage. If you pause on the next image, you'll see that May I Carry Your Basket and Somebody Fell From A Loft are right next to each other in the movie version of the book, despite the fact that they aren't even in the same book in real life. There's one short story that's generally regarded the highest by fans, and that is Harold, the tale of two farmers who make a scarecrow and name it after another farmer, Harold, that they don't like. The scarecrow becomes a punching bag for them whenever they need to let off some steam, but eventually they start to notice that Harold is making grunting noises, growing, and eventually walking around on their roof and de-skinning his victims. The trailer shows the ominous cornfield, Harold possibly watching one of the farmers, and Harold's angry expression as his face crawls with cockroaches. This looks like it's going to be even creepier than the story that it's based on. Another story that I think we'll see is called The Bed by the Window. In the trailer, we see the kids approaching this hospital, and in the story, patients who have the bed next to the window keep dying. One man who moves into the bed keeps describing how amazing the window view is, so this other guy named George ends up murdering him in his sleep so that he can move into the bed with the window view. But when he gets there, all he can see is a brick wall. Since the movie is going to be combining stories, I think the hallway scene where we see the pale-skinned lady from the dream could be at that same hospital. I believe in the last video I speculated that it might have been at their high school. By the way, if you want to hear my analysis of the pale-skinned lady, the big toe creature, the red spots, or the gangly boy, I go more in depth about those in my Scary Stories teaser analysis video, which you can check out right here. The trailer also features a police officer character, which is probably a smart choice considering that there's at least five stories in the book where the cops get involved. There's high beams, in which they arrest a man found hiding in the back of a girl's truck with a knife. The babysitter, in which they arrest an intruder hiding in an attic. The viper, in which a paranoid man alerts the police of some suspicious phone calls, but it turns out to just be a German janitor who wants to vipe his windows. By the look of things, I could use a viper right about now myself. Then there's the window, not to be confused with the previously mentioned the bed by the window, where the police are called after a vampire breaks into someone's house through the window, even though that's not typically allowed with vampires. And finally, the trouble. This one has the most police involvement. It's about a house that's seemingly possessed by a poltergeist, and the stubborn detective tries his best to find a rational explanation for everything that's happened. This cop's jailhouse looks to play a significant role as the home of the monster from The Thing. The characters in that story describe a strange creature crawling out of a turnip field. At first, it looks like some kind of weird animal, but then they realize that it's vaguely human. This might be the creepiest image in the trailer, actually, if you slow it down and get a good look at the thing's face. I'm sure there'll probably be some weirdo in the comments, though, who thinks he's cute. Who's a good boy? 
there's one more new creature at the very end of the trailer. Now, there are several ghosts throughout the series, but I think this is the ghost from The Haunted House, a story from the first book. It's about a preacher who tries to put an uneasy spirit to rest. He hears murderous sounds within the house before the ghost eventually approaches him and tells him the story of how her lover killed her for her money and hid her body in the cellar. She wants him to give her a proper burial and use her detached finger to find her killer. He puts the finger in the collection plate at church, and it sticks to the man who murdered her. He confesses to his crimes and so the ghost tells the preacher where to find the hidden money, but the spots where the ghost initially grabbed his coat has her finger marks permanently burned into the cloth. I'm gonna keep you up to date on any things you might have missed in future teasers and trailers for scary stories to tell in the dark. By the way, how many was that? Ah, okay, so that's how many there were. No more comments questioning the number of things you missed. That just leaves the comments saying, You don't know what I missed? How dare you assume what I missed? If you haven't seen the video on the left, watch that to see about the other creatures that I didn't cover in this video. And remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next episode. Assuming we both survive.